Hello and welcome. Today we will be creating this Excel dashboard in under 20 minutes using data extracted from Jira with the Iona FX Business Intelligence plugin. Let's get started. Our first step is to download the data from Jira and we'll do that using the Business Intelligence Export Report. So I'll browse to my Jira site and log in. Select any issue just so that I can quickly get to the Reports tab. Scroll down and pick the Business Intelligence Export tool. Now I just need to enter dates for a time period in which I'm interested. That will be January, the whole month. And I want spreadsheet format, so I'll click that and save. Now that we have our data, we can close out of Internet Explorer and launch Excel. We'll select Open, Browse, and we'll go to Downloads. Here we just change it over to text CSV format, find our downloaded data and double click it. That's imported our data into Excel. The next thing to do will be to select all these cells and create a table out of them so we can refer to it more easily. I'll select all the active cells and say insert table. There they are, okay. Now one thing I'd like to do is rename this table. I'll click the Design tab, and I don't want to call it Table 1. I want to call it Records Table. And that'll differentiate it from down here, that I'll just, I'll just rename the whole sheet Records. Well, we're ready to start building the components for our dashboard, and the first thing that I would like to see is the amount of work that everyone is doing. For that, I will need to sort the work by employee. So I'm going to open up a new tab and I'll name it Employee Work. And I will insert a pivot table. The range for this pivot table will be that records table, table that I named in the previous worksheet. There it is. We have all of our records there. I want to filter these by record type. And the record type I'm going to choose is Work Logs. The data, when it came in, had uh, C, I, and W for comments, issues, and work logs. I'm interested in time, which is entered in a work log entry. I also want to filter by project name at some point. So I'm going to put project name in there, and you can see I've got all my projects listed. I'll just select one of them, say app dev. Now I'm taking the time that each person has claimed they spent as my value, the sum of that, and I want the author who wrote that entry and claimed that time as my rows. There we have it, our data nicely aggregated with uh, the time logged by the person who logged it in whichever project they logged the work. We're ready to create our visualization of this. For that, I will choose Insert from the menu bar and Pivot Chart. I like the idea of a pie chart here and maybe a donut style. I'll create that and say OK. I don't need this title here, so I'm going to delete that. Uh, Workbook author, that's good. This style is a little weird. I don't exactly know how much uh, time has been logged in each one. I'm going to go up to Design and choose a style that has some more data. I'll choose that one because it has the percentages of time listed in there. The other thing is I don't really need all these little filter buttons showing up, so I'm going to I'll right click one of them and say hide all field buttons. That's pretty good for a chart. But well, I'm ready to create my second piece of data for the dashboard. For this one I want to do essentially the same thing but for projects. So I'll call it project work and I want to display it as a I think a radar chart. So I'll go to insert and choose pivot table and I'm going to do essentially the same thing I did before. I'll choose records table as my source. And again, I want to pull record type down, and work is logged on work logs, so I'll choose W as my record type, and I'll filter my project name at some point, so I'll put that in there as well. I'll leave it set to all for now. Then again, I am looking at values of work log time spent, but this time not by the author who wrote that work log entry. Instead, I'm looking for the project. So I'll choose project name and bring it right down here to rows. There we go, we see the amount of time spent in each project. And we're ready to create the visualization for this. That's as simple as going to insert pivot chart. This time I will choose a radar chart. 
and it looks pretty good to me. Ooh, what's that? Now, I'll choose that one and click OK. Again, I don't need a title. For this one, I don't need a legend, and I don't really need these buttons showing up. So hide all field buttons on the chart. That's good enough for this one. I'll leave it there. And I think we're ready to go on to building our next one. Now, at our company, we use voting on new feature tickets to determine the order in which we pump things into our development pipeline. So I want to see some report on new feature interest, which is done by votes. For that again, I'll go up to insert pivot table. I want my records table again. And here's our field list. I do want record type. This time I'm going to choose issue as the record type because votes are recorded on issues. I'm also going to pull down project name so that I can filter by it at some point, although I'll leave it set to all for now. And the last thing that's important for this one is I need the issue status. The issue status needs to be to do because if we're already working on it, it's not in the it's not a new feature that's being considered right now. So I'll put issue status in here and I'm going to change that to to do because it's not selected for development already. We, it's not in progress, it's not done. That will give me our new features. Now essentially what we're doing here is taking issue votes by issue key. And I'll use issue key as a unique identifier for each issue. There we go. We can see that there are three issues that, are, that currently have some votes and dev4 has the most. For our visualization on this, I will go to Insert, Pivot Chart, and I think a clustered column looks good. I might do a 3D stacked column. That looks even better. Click OK. Uh, don't need a title, don't need a legend, don't need all these things showing up, so hide all field buttons. I do kind of look the, like the look of this, but I'd rather that it went from high interest down to low interest. So what I'm going to do to make that happen is click on any one of these sums, right click on it, and choose sort largest to smallest. There we go. Now Dev4 is the most, IT4 is in second place, and Art3 is in third place. All right, the last thing that I'd like to show is the current state of my development pipeline. And to do that, I need to group issues by their status. So I'll create a new tab. I'm going to call this tab Project Pipeline. And again, insert pivot table. Our pivot table source will be records table once again. And for this one, our record type will drag into filters. And record type will be issue because the status is recorded on the issue. And I'll pull in project name as well because I, I want to filter by that at some point uh, on my dashboard. I want to have a slicer that does that. Uh, now, essentially to get this, we're taking the count of issue keys that are in each issue status. So I'll drag issue keys down to the values and it, it automatically became count instead of sum like the others did because it recognizes this is not a number. And then issue status will drive down to rows. And there we have it, the amount of issues that are done, in progress, selected for development, or to do. And a visualization on this one, I think would, would go nicely as a bar chart. So let's say pivot chart, I'll go to bar. I like the 3D look that we had before. That's pretty nice. So I'll click OK, get rid of the title, get rid of the legend, and right click these field buttons and say hide all field buttons on this chart. That'll do. That's four pieces of data that I can show on my dashboard. So let's get started creating the dashboard itself. But first, I'm going to file Save As because I haven't saved any of this yet. And I want to save it as an Excel workbook. So we get all these features that we've added, not just a CSV file. Okay, let's go build our dashboard. For this, I want a new worksheet. And I don't need all these lines in the worksheet, so I'm going to select Page Layout and go over to Grid Lines and uncheck the View button. That's good enough for that. My dashboard should have a title, so I'll insert a text box with the title, and I will call it Dashboard. Now I want to set the style on this. I'll check Calibri Light, maybe make it 32, and I'll call it my 
project dashboard. Resize it a bit, move it over to roughly center. I should have made this full screen long ago. There we go. Roughly centered in there. And you know what? This text color could probably go to dark blue. So I think I'll be using a lot of blue for my dashboard. Okay. Oh, one last thing. I want to select this shape, format shape. I don't need a line around it. So I'll say no line. And actually, I don't need a fill either. Just leave it white. Okay, no line, no fill. All right, now we have a title. The next step will be to set up some tiles onto which we can place all of our reports. For that, I'm gonna insert a simple shape from Insert Illustrations Shapes Rectangle. Go way over to the edge here and create a rectangle. And I'll right click it and say Format Shape. I like this fill that comes in blue, but I want it to be slightly transparent, so I'll make it 50% transparent. And I don't need a line around it, so I'll choose no line. And I will want it to have a title, so I'll say insert text, text box, and we'll give it a title here. This will be work logged by employee. Select the whole thing, right click it, and make the text changes that I made for our title, make it match up. 16 is a big enough font size. I'm gonna change this to white text. Now I need to format the shape, and I'll choose no fill, and no line. That's it, just a little bit of centering, and it looks pretty good as a tile. Now I'm gonna select it, and its title. I'll select both of them with control click and I'll control C to copy, control V to paste and I've made a second title. And control V again to get a third tile. And control V again to get a fourth tile because I have four reports. That'll do. These other tiles will need different titles. So I'll select that one and call this one Project Workloads. I'll select this one and call it New Feature Interest. And this last one will be called My Project Pipeline. Okay. These will need a little bit of recentering. With all of our tiles set up, we're ready to start bringing in some reports to show on them. I'll start off on the left here with employee work. I'm just going to go to the employee work worksheet and select the chart and control C to copy it. Then back over to the dashboard, which isn't called a dashboard yet, it's called sheet five. So I'll change that to dashboard. I'll select work log by employee and control V to paste. Take a little bit of resizing here. And it fits, but it's ugly. So what I'll do is right click it and go to the format tab where I can change a few things about it. My fill, I want to set to no fill. The shape outline to no outline. And this legend. I will also set to no fill and no outline. There we go, it stands up by itself. Next up is project workloads. I'm going to go over to the project worksheet, click on the chart, control C to copy it, back to the dashboard, and control V to paste it. I'll go through the same steps for this one. Resizing it a bit. And then we'll go to the format tab and say no fill and no outline for it either.
That looks all right. On to the new feature interest tile. Go to the new feature interest worksheet, select the chart, control C, back to the dashboard, control V. Resize it. Position it in there. And then we'll select the whole thing, click on the format tab, and again, no fill, no outline. There we go, and we're on to project pipeline. So to the project pipeline worksheet, we'll select that chart, control C, back to the dashboard, control V. And again, we'll do a little bit of sizing. And positioning. Once it's in the right place, I'll go up to the format tab and say shape fill, no fill, shape outline, no outline. That's a pretty nice static dashboard. Now we need to add some interactivity to it. So for that, I'm going to click on one of my charts and go to the insert menu and select slicer. It's going to ask me which field I want as the dimension for my slicer and I'll say project name because I put that into all of my charts and it gives me a slicer for that which I can move around and put on my page in different places. Now one thing about these slicers is when they're connected they're only connected to the chart that was selected when you created them. I need it to be connected to all of my charts. For that I'm going to go up here near the title and I'm going to right click it and choose report connections. And now I will check all of the reports on this dashboard and click OK. Now it's connected to everything. It is a little bit ugly though. It's in the way too. I can fix that by going up to the options button and picking a design that I like for it, a style for the slicer. I can also change the styles, the slicer's caption. I have to choose one or more projects. And then I want it to sit all the way along the bottom here. And for that, on the Options tab, I can go over to Columns. And now I have 11 different projects here, so I will choose six as my number of columns. And that will lay things out into two rows. And I can then stretch across the bottom of my entire dashboard. And they will fit nicely. You can see that we can select different projects, one or more. We can select it or unselect it. We can go to data systems, app dev, and development, see how they're working together. Architecture, development, we can even select them all and see what kind of a chart we can build with that. Gets a little crowded over here. We might want to change that around later. But that is basically it. We've created a dashboard using data from JIRA extracted with the Iona FX Business Intelligence Export Tool, which is available on the Atlassian Marketplace. Thanks for watching. Bye.